said, we want to share with you a little bit about our church because this is like our family. We want to make you guys feel at home. Yeah. So, so the word Coptic, like Kiro said, it's so the Coptic Church is the first church in Africa. Like right up when Christ came and preached Christianity, you know, he sent his followers and said, hey, you go over there, you go over there. You go. So the first guy to go to Africa was St. Mark. And that's why he established the church there, and that's why we brought it here in America. Okay. So that's the, the little thing uh, about the church. The other thing we want to share with you is this yes. laminated thing here. The reason why we did this is, one, we want to give you a little gift, and yes. two, we want to be able to invite you that if you ever want to be a member of this church, you're more than welcome. Okay. You know, it's, it's definitely, and to be a full member, not just a visitor, not just someone who comes and says, oh, this is cool, but to really have a full understanding of what the church is and to be able to worship the way the first century, like way back when. That's one of the coolest things that I like about our church. That's the whole reason I'm, I still come to it, is because they worship God the way that Jesus worshiped back then. And basically, this word creed, like Kira was saying, it means this is what I believe in. Like, we all have a creed. You have a life creed. Some people have, like, a motto. Some people, hey, yo, I, you know, I live life by so-and-so. For a Christian, what you believe shapes you. And for every single one of us, it's not just, like, theology or something that's, like, abstract. No, what you believe about who God is shapes how you act and how you live your life. Like, like Donnie and I were talking here. If we believe, even from the first line of this little creed, we can read it together. It says, we believe... In one God, God the Father, who created heaven and earth and all things seen and unseen. If I believe that my dad created it all, I'm never going to feel like, oh man, I'm, in, you know, I'm down and out. No, my dad owns it all. My dad owns it all. He created it all, and that's dad. You know what I'm saying? So that's why what you believe makes a difference in how you live your life, how your outlook is. Yes. How you treat people right. and how you deal with the situations that come around. And that's the rest of this little thing because the, the Christians in the early church said, you know what, we got to write this down. This is good stuff because we want to be able to share with everybody so that everybody can be able to live life with the same understanding. The second thing we have here is it said we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and Him being the real Son of God who's true God of true God. Again, there are a lot of like kind of churches. Well, when they talk about Jesus, they say, well, you know, he was good. He was a prop, maybe like a prop. Or maybe he was created by God to do something. But the Christian church, the early Christian church in the same church of now, yes. believes that he's light of light, true God of true God. Mm -hmm. Even though he was, like we just celebrated a couple days ago, of him being born in a little manger, that's God being born in the little manger. Okay. So when you speak to Jesus, you're not speaking to something that was created. No, no, no. You're speaking of God who's God. You know what I'm saying? So that gives you a power too when you're like, oh man, oh, hey, Jesus this, Jesus that. When you're really talking to him, you're talking to God. You know what I mean? So it makes a difference in your in your life. The third bullet that we have here is that he's, he wasn't created, like you said. He's not a creature. He's really God. And this word, maybe it's not word, is this co-essential with the Father, that he's equal to the Father. He's equal to God the Father. The other thing that we have in the fourth one, we'll run through these pretty quick. He, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven. This is a big deal. Like, again, it's a Christmas season. You know, that's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is all about there's the king enthroned on high, praised by the angels. God just by himself, just doing his thing, came down from heaven. And the reason why that changes our perspective, too, is like, here I am, you know, I'm living wherever I'm at. If I don't believe that God came down from heaven, good is it? It's always going to be like God's in heaven and I'm over here. But because I believe, for me personally, I believe that my God didn't just chill in heaven. He didn't just sit there on the lazy boy while I'm suffering. He came to me where I'm at, from heaven, to be God with me. Okay? And we said on the fifth one here was incarnate. Incarnate means he took a body. He took flesh. He was just, you know... And to, to make that make it more, even more practical is that he became someone you can touch. Like in the Bible, St. John, when he was like overwhelmed with, with this idea, he was like, God, who like, he's above everything and bigger than all, he became someone that we can hang out with. He became someone that we can have lunch or a barbecue with. He became someone incarnate. That's what incarnate means. He became re real to me. And sometimes, it's not just something that happened 2,000 years ago. To me and you now, the whole point of the church is that God can become someone you can hang out 
got to become someone you can have a little pizza party, lasagna party. You know what I'm saying? After that, we talk about him being crucified for us and the Jesus Christ, and that he suffered and was buried. This is really important. I'll tell you why. Because we believe that a that he was crucified for our sins. That's huge and important and massive for our salvation. The part, the part that I really like too is his whole human life, not just his cross, but that he was, you know, he had to go through a tough period in his life where he never placed a stay. He had to go through a time in his life where he suffered, where people weren't cool with him, people weren't nice to him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he lived a real human life. The Bible tells us that, like, he became like us in everything except for sin. Everything. That means every struggle, every hurt, every betrayal, every anything, you could say, man, Jesus had it too. And he had it worse. So you can at least identify with me and be like, hey, like, you know, I was talking with a friend of mine earlier today who was going through a real, like, tough time. And he was like, you know, every time I talk to someone about my, my tough time, they give me lip service. And they say, oh, they throw a Bible verse at me. But you, I feel like you've been there. And that's the reason why he was able to listen to what I'm saying. And the same way, that's why Christ matters more to us. Because he's not going to give us lip service. He's not going to give us a, an old Bible verse. He's going to give us a reality and say, hey, listen. I know what it's like to not like to spend the night like outside the cold. I know it was tough for me. You know, I know what it's like to maybe have these struggles. I know what it's like. It's because I, I did it. You know, it was okay. it was me. Not just lip service. So that's why that matters. And then you have the clincher, the big thing at seven here. Not only can he identify with our problems, but he beat our problems. He beat all of them. He rose from the dead, it says here. According to the scriptures. The reason why that's critical is because it's one thing when you have a friend who can say, hey man, I've been there. It's another thing when he says, hey man, I've been there, and I beat that. Let me show you how you can beat that. You know, if you have a friend you here maybe struggling a little bit with like alcohol or something like that, and you can talk to someone and say, hey, let me tell you about how the 12-step program helped me and how I got clean. You know what I mean? That has a big value. So that's why the resurrection of Christ makes it more like personal like that. And then you go... A step further that talks about he ascended. Like he brought us. It's not a, like, the thing that we have in Christ is so beautiful is that he didn't just beat temptation, he didn't just beat sin for us. He took us somewhere high, he took us to heaven. Humanity went to heaven. And then from there he talks about he's coming to, he's coming back. You know, we talk a lot about sometimes about like okay, it's like the last days, the second coming. And in the early church, in the first century church, Christians used to be like I'm looking forward to when Jesus comes back. Because, like, you know, like, when you're younger, maybe, if your mom wants to be away or whatever, and you didn't do anything wrong, she's going to get you a gift or something like that. So Jesus is coming back to give us a gift. He's not coming back to be like, hey, you. He's coming back to reward. That's why we look forward to him coming back. And say, hey, I can't. Like, the other church people used to greet each other, kind of the same way, the same way we give a pound. And say, hey, man, I can't wait Jesus comes back. That's just casual conversation. From there, it goes to the Holy Spirit. So we said before, the whole point of this creed is to understand who God is. That God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's one God, but the three persons of God. We want to understand Him fully, and sometimes, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's hard for me to really get this full picture. Three and one, whatever. But what's important for me is that God revealed this about Himself. He said, hey, you can know me as Father, you can know me as Christ, you can know me as Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's job in our life is to give us everything that Christ, everything Christ did for us, comes to us by the Holy Spirit. You know, and that's why we can celebrate a time when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, and He brings to us the victory of Christ. The second thing there is about again about the Holy Spirit, and then number twelve, we've got about the importance of the church. And this I want to emphasize for a second, real quick. If you want to have an opportunity to join, like I said, the church. This idea of baptism. You know what Christ did in the first? Christ himself. To show the importance of baptism was baptized. And then he gave his disciples and said, hey, if you want to have forgiveness of sins, and not just forgiveness of sins, not just that, even more, like a new person, like a whole new being. Like for me, I experienced this thing when we come to God of like, not the same as I was altogether. Like forgiveness doesn't just make you kind of on a clean slate. It makes you a new person. You know what I'm saying? So with this, 
we want to be able to offer this to you guys. If at any point you say, hey man, you know what, kind of the stuff that I was doing, I want to repent from that stuff. I don't know that stuff anymore. And I want to actually learn more about this church. I don't want to be baptized. We call baptism like a birth. You know, even if we're older, you know, like I'm not going to be born right now. We've heard of the term born again. Baptism is a way for you to become a born new creature. Like the Bible says if anyone's in Christ, he's a brand new creature, a brand new person. So it's like your spirit. Yeah. It's like your spiritual person versus before you were like maybe a different kind of person. Your priorities become different. And then you can begin and you like baptism for us isn't just like an end where you get forgiveness. Now you can participate in things that are maybe a little like you never thought about before. You couldn't really understand. But God will begin to like explain things to you better than I can right now. I know we're spending a few minutes explaining some things that are like big time, you know what I'm saying? But but God himself once we get this idea of being baptized into Him and being renewed, can explain to us things that we can barely ever imagine. So that's why I want to offer that to you. And at the end, the coolest thing, that's why, you know, they always say the best for last, even in the Christian church. We look for the resurrection of the dead. Because like we were talking about before over here, this ain't it. This ain't home. There's more to come. And the more that's to come is going to be awesome. And that's why we look forward to it. We look forward to us, like Job in the Old Testament. You remember the guy that went through all the trials and stuff like that? He had it real bad. But he was able to say, I can't wait for the day where my flesh is done and see God face to face. That's the resurrection that's dead. That's us being able to really, in this body, be able to stand in front of God and say, what's up, Dad? I mean, like, I made it. Oh, you know, open arms. <laughs> yeah. So we want you guys to have this. And for our church, anyone who can like agree and like believe on the faith can be baptized. That's what our priests have told us, that's the tradition of the church. So if at any point you say to yourself, hey, you know what, this looks good, I'll sign the <laughs> It doesn't have to be today, obviously. It's not like a sales pitch. You know what I mean? But I just want to be able to offer it to you to be a part of our church family. We're your home. And on the back, like here we stand, there's some prayers. If you ever feel like you just want to pray to God, the first one, the Lord's Prayer, we know it's from Scripture. The second one is a prayer that the church gave us for guidance. Sometimes we don't know what to do. And we, don't, we don't even know how to pray. The Bible tells us sometimes we don't even know what to pray for. The church gave us this prayer. It will ask God for guidance and humility and say, like, God, I don't know. Help me out. Cool? Any questions? No. Okay. Yeah. Yes. I love you.